Um, moving slightly more to encouraging more intra-African cooperation. I mean, it might be you know impossible to answer this, but how how can can African states be encouraged to cooperate more together um, in order to improve the continent's infrastructure? I mean, all you gentlemen will fly all across Africa all of the time. You know, you will encounter difficulties of going between from state to state. Um, how can these these barriers be broken down? Um, I, I really believe that uh, the strongest uh, potential for growth in Africa is intra-African trade. And this is definitely hindered by poor infrastructure and roads are the first ones, but uh, border crossing, you know, uh, also points are terrible and it can take for, uh, for ages to cross. Um, and so this is really the uh, key, they'd be key for for um, uh, for the, the countries and, and the small and medium businesses to take off in Africa. Uh, some countries have already realized that and um, so you've got some organization like SADC in, in Southern Africa um, that are very much aware of that and, and meet and discuss these very matters of how to make the um, lines of communication between states north, south, east, west in this region much better um, co with some coordination um, between building roads and uh, improving border crossing projects and improving you know ports infrastructure and all that all that together with some kind of planning coordinated but obviously it's just the infancy of what's been you know at the moment and it needs to be taken to the next level um, and some that ECOWAS in in Western Africa is starting thinking about that but but, um, uh, but elsewhere it's still a, a big question mark I think it's really up to Terry and uh, Aloysius uh, at the ADB. Um, the ADB is, uh, Africa Development Bank is highly respected by all the governments. And when it comes to intergovernmental uh, conservation, we're looking at the Kenya-Uganda pipeline mm -hmm. at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, and, uh, they are, and, uh, and we, we worked on the West Africa gas uh, pipeline. And when you look at those kind of projects, um, a lot of times, I don't think it's actually the Africa Development Bank's money that is really required. Yeah. It's being there as a fair um, and uh, a fair and um, honest, broker. honest broker, who basically um, helps to provide a framework for protecting creditor rights across both sides. Because if you, once you have a piece of kit crossing both sides. We worked on the Chad Cameroon pipeline as well, and we've had those kind of uh, challenges on that. And ability to access legal enforcement and remedy. You see, when you look at country risk, it gets amplified once you are even crossing the border with it. Yeah. So whenever there is country risk amplification, we need um, Africa Development Bank to take a lead role over and beyond what, say, an IFC would do, uh, or maybe to coordinate and lead out what the World Bank or MIGA will do. Because it comes, when it comes to, when I look at the difficulty in getting a lot of these projects bankable, mm -hmm. it is not really money. It is about being able to get a credit announcement that will enable private banks like ours deploy capital or private equity players deploy capital. So even if Africa Development Bank stopped today deploying any form of debt in terms of cash and all they did was to provide country risk mitigations and credit announcements mm -hmm. it will probably be as much in terms of impact mm -hmm. as it will be in terms of writing the checks so i'm not saying you should vacate the scene in terms of writing the checks we we, we very much enjoy working with yourself we worked on over 10 projects together mm -hmm. and for standard chartered bank it is particularly important because i d before coming for this i went through deals that have been done in Africa over the last 10 years. And by far, in terms of balance sheet exposure, among all the private banks, we have the biggest exposure to sub-Saharan Africa. And when I look at how much we could deploy if we didn't have to worry about uh, country risk and credit risk announcements, we'll probably be able to double that. And I'm sure a number of banks that will not dare to play in Africa, we've got Africa in our DNA, that's so it's easy, we're an emerging market institution. If they could look and realize that um, Africa Development Bank is coordinating, MIGA coordinating the World Bank group to provide country risk enhancement for singular country projects, mm -hmm. 
especially around, around power, such that it can be bankable offtake mm -hmm. or transport, when it, and even ensuring that the amplification of country risk is reduced, mm -hmm. I believe that we will have a big push yeah. um, in this. So, no, you haven't, you haven't um, spoken for No, I was uh, just on this subject of, um, you know, multi-country projects. I just think whenever more than one country is involved, it's geometrically more complicated. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's, it's you know, if, you, if you want to, if you, African projects are not easy. And if you want, to, if you're looking for things that are relatively easy to do, you don't involve lots of countries. I mean, we're involved at the moment in the Rift Valley Railway um, project in um, in East Africa which is involves Kenya Kenya and Uganda um, the, this was a privatized railway where the financing collapsed and it's um, all being revised now African Development Bank's looking but there's no doubt in relation to that project that the the big cash generating part of the railway is Nairobi Mombasa but Ugandan interests have to be accommodated they, they you know they gave the concession, and this just complicates things. If, if it was a straight, simple Kenyan project, we'd, you, know, you would probably get the Mombasa, Nairobi bit working, get mo lots of containers onto trains off, off, off roads, um, and, and then go from there. But the Ugandan interests have to be taken into account. I just think it complicates things. Or inevitably, it, compli it complicates things when you have more than one country yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you wanted, sorry, you, you wanted, wanted to, 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 to come things, to add yeah. something. Uh, on the asymmetry between neighboring countries, particularly when you have a low-income country and a neighboring yeah. middle-income country. Mm -hmm. We had the case of a bridge between Zambia and Botswana. Mm -hmm. We have a major role to play to enable yeah. this yeah. thing to happen, mm -hmm. although the capacity of each side is very different. Yeah. That's one example I wanted to add. Um, there is another challenge we are facing and when we are active is the harmonization of regional economic communi communities in Africa. There are, I don't know how many, nine or so maybe more, but, but the problem is that there are overlaps everywhere. Many countries are members of different regional economic communities. They have a major role to play in, a, in, a, in facilita facilitating regional integration. And the third point I wanted to say, say something about is trade finance. I mean, you pointed out the need to improve uh, inter-regional trade in Africa. Uh, we are, as you know, a, um, a member of the Africa Zim Bank, which is the major pan-African trade financier. Um, but we need to, to do much more to, to facilitate intra-regional uh, intra trade in, in the continent. Mm -hmm.